And this is a short video about uh, showing that um, a specific collection of subsets of the real nine is actually a basis for a topology. And then further answering whether or not that basis uh, corresponds to the lower, lower limit topology on the real line. And later in the video, I'll remind you of what the lower limit topology is in case you don't remember. So if fancy B is a collection of all the intervals that have this form bracket A on the left and then uh, parentheses B on the right, so like we're uh, including the left endpoint but excluding the right endpoint, where uh, in particular though these endpoints aren't just any real numbers, we're only going to pick the rational ones. So what if I took all of these kind of half open intervals of that form? Uh, I want to prove that that is the basis for some topology on the real line. So in other words, you could think of these when those are rational numbers on the endpoints, those are the building blocks for some topology on the real line. The second part of the question that we want to answer is, is that topology that these guys are the building blocks of with these rational numbers, is that the same thing as the building blocks for the lower limit topology? So let's start with just first proving that uh, this is the basis for some topology on the real line. So to do that, uh, to show that fancy B is a basis for some topology on the real line, there's two things we got to show. The first thing you got to show is that, well, the union of all such sets uh, in our proposed basis fancy B is actually equal to the space itself. In other words, like those uh, kind of building blocks, they actually do cover uh, this, our, our parent set that we're interested in. And I, you know, I kind of drew a little picture here of the real line. And it's not too hard to imagine that, like, yeah, I could cover the whole real line with all of these kind of half open intervals. And so that's all number one's trying to say. So what's an actual proof look like? Well, let X be any real number. And what we want to do is try to construct one of these sets, uh, A comma B, with bracket on the left and parenthesis on the right, that contains X. So the fact that X would be arbitrary means you've done it for any X, and therefore, of course, we get this equality. So let's go for it. So we're going to try to show that there exists a basis element such that X is inside that basic, uh, basis element. And so what do we need? I need two rational numbers, A and B. Uh, so that's, uh, well, B is this half open interval, and uh, in particular, X is between A and B. And so what's maybe a, one thing to do? Why don't I just take A to be the floor of X? Remember, that is... Uh, the greatest integer that's smaller than x, so like the first integer to the left, left of x, if you want to think on a number line. And let's let b be the ceiling of x, that's what that notation is. So remember that's the uh, smallest integer that's to the right of x, so like in other words, the first integer once you get past x. But then what we're going to also do is add one to it. And you might be wondering like, what's that plus one four over there? Uh, that's needed to ensure that the right endpoint, remember I don't want, I'm not actually allowed to be the right endpoint, it's excluded. So that plus one there helps us uh, in the case that's, what if you take the ceiling of X and it's already an integer, and it's not true that X is less than itself. So I just wanna make sure that this is all good. I'm gonna do the plus one so that, okay, that's my B, X is definitely less than X plus one. In that weird case, not a weird case, but in that uh, special case that X is already an integer, in which case the ceiling is just itself. All right, so well, then there we go. We've got our interval from A to B that contains X. So we finished this part. And step two, how do you show that uh, a, a given collection of subsets constitutes a basis for some topology? The second thing you need to show is the following. If you had two basis elements, B1 and B2, and if you had an element X that's in their intersection, so X is in both of them, then you should be able to find some other basis element that also contains that element X uh, and is contained inside of the intersection of B1 and B2. And to give you a picture of this, maybe on our, on, on our real line here, I've got my green set B1, and I've got my purple set B2, and I've got an element X that's in yellow there. And what I want to try to argue to myself is that, uh, is it possible to find such a blue set that one, the blue set contains the yellow point X, but the blue set is also contained in both B1 and B2. So again, can I find that blue set uh, so that, um, again, X is in there, and B, that blue set, is in the intersection of the two basis elements that I started with. So that's what we've got to do. So well, let's, let's, you know, what's our hypothesis here? Well, suppose you had two basis elements, B1 and B2, and you had X that's in their intersection. And now it's our job to come up with some new element of the basis that contains X, and the whole set itself is contained in the intersection of B1 and B2. And uh, well, in our case here, you know, our B1 and our B2 our basis looks like, uh, you know, stuff like here where A and B are rational numbers. So B1 looks like this, say, and B2 looks like this, where A, B, C, and D are all rational numbers. By hypothesis, 
I'm assuming that X is in their intersection. So I'm just kind of copy and paste in that right there, just with the notation that I know what B1 actually looks like. It's from A to B. And I know what B2 looks like. It's the interval from C to D, including C, excluding D. Now, without loss of generality, let's assume that A is less than C, is less than B, is less than D. There are different configurations that you might consider, different cases, so I'm maybe being a little bit loose with how I'm using without loss of generality, but the argument for the other cases is pretty much the same. So we'll just take a look at this one. And uh, for this case here, it's actually my picture above here. My picture is A is less than C, and that's less than B, and that's less than D. So what we're gonna argue then is, well, what is the intersection of from A to B with the interval from C to D? You know, where do they overlap at? And uh, you probably see it in my picture up here. The overlap of those two intervals would be just this part from C to B. And uh, what are we happy about whenever we do that? When I get that interval from C to B, it's got a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right, just like all the things in my basis do. In other words, it looks just like B1 and B2. So what do we get? We're happy because that's a basis element. That should be a fancy B right there, but I think you get the idea. So from C to B is our basis element B that we're after that is contained in the intersection, because in this case it's actually equal to the intersection, and it contains my element X. So we've just showed that two is satisfied. So we've satisfied one and two. Those are the two requirements for, again, a given collection of subsets to constitute a basis for some topology. So we're good there. Definitely is the basis for some topology on R. Now, the next part of the question, which I wrote in pink above, and I'll plop it down right here again. Do those sets that have those rational endpoints, do those generate the lower limit topology? And uh, the answer to that is no. And I still haven't reminded you what the lower limit topology is. And recall the lower limit topology, it has basis. Again, these kind of half open things with a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right, but where in particular, right, I'm not restricting those to be just say rational numbers or maybe just like integers or something silly like that. I'm allowing A and B to be any real numbers here. So that constitutes a basis for the lower limit topology. So what we're saying is if I was to restrict these to just rational numbers, you don't get the same topology as when you use real numbers as endpoints here. And to show you that, how we're gonna do it is the following. So what we need to do is find a real number x, and we need to find an element from the basis for the lower limit topology such that there is nobody from my basis in this problem. In other words, what if the coordinates are just rational? There is no such half open set with just rational coordinates that both contains x and simultaneously is contained inside of b prime. So let's go for it. How do we show that there? So since we're going to deal, since one of my bases deals with only having rational endpoints, it seems kind of natural to, if you have to play with a specific element X and a specific element B prime, maybe I should, we have to find a specific element X and a specific uh, basis set B prime. Maybe it makes sense to start playing with some irrational numbers. That'll give us some differences. Uh, from this basis B prime to the basis B with just rational coordinates. So let's let X be root two, and let's let B prime be the half open interval root two to two. We're gonna have a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right. So this thing, regular B prime, is definitely an element, a fancy B prime up here. All right, so what if you took then any basis element in B? So in other words, if it's in B without a prime, remember that means that little a and little b are rational numbers. So Take any of them, doesn't matter what it is, I know it's got this form. What if it had root two in it? So what if my set that where these are rational numbers uh, have root two in it? Well, in that case then, what do we know? We know that A, A itself has to be to the left of root two, right? I mean, if root two is in here, then A itself has to be strictly to the left of root two. I know it can't be root two because A is a rational number. So A is definitely to the left of root two, but what do I need to also have happen? Is it possible then that AB is contained in this basis element for B prime? And the answer is, well, if A is to the left of root two, then this endpoint is to the left of that endpoint. And so this interval is definitely not contained in that interval to the right. So what we found is that, uh, you know, I found an element X and I found a basis element in B prime together, like th that there's no other basis element from B that's inside 
there's no other basis element from B that fits inside this particular B prime and also contains that element X, and that's bad. That's bad. That means that these two different collections of subsets do not generate the same topology. So in other words, you get different open sets when you have these different sets of building blocks. That in general is a technique again to show though that um, two different bases, whether or not that they generate the same topology or not, you do something similar to this each time. So again, the answer to this question is if you just use rational endpoints, then you do not get the lower limit topology.